Come with us on a journey into the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. We will test your senses and challenge your beliefs. A world where science and religion clash. Or do they? You will meet real people and hear real stories, but you will not believe. You will witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Ghost Chronicles Morning Edition, right here on the net. Costa Eagle Broadcasting. Never know what the opening's going to be. I never know either. <laughs> <laughs> I am Ron Kolick, your host, and with me, of course, the Professor Lou Blasi. So there you go. Hey, uh, guys. say it's hot out, right? We're out of oh, heat. It's brutal. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. Yeah. I was watering the plot plants today. Do you, you have a garden? Yeah. Do you? Yep. You ever have critters in your garden? Oh, God, yeah. We got critters all over the place. What kind of critters? Rabbits. Oh, rabbits ton of rabbits. Rabbits are tough. That's why. We got coyotes. Yeah. yeah. I had deer, four deer in my backyard. Cats. A couple of weeks ago. I've never seen a deer out there. I've had four. Four in my backyard. And I have a small backyard. Really? Yeah. I've had turkeys, deer. Turkeys. Yeah. yeah. There's a, I have a, a mother bear, a bit, uh, rabbit, with, mother rabbit, with two little baby rabbits. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got a woodchuck, good old. Yeah. Woodchucks. Hawks and eagles. You get a lot of hawks. Oh, yeah, I got those because I'm right by the river. So you get those because you're yeah. by the water too. Yeah. yeah. They fish and everything. Yeah. There's a um a pole near my lot, and one particular hawk likes to sit there and eat. Oh, that's cool. And they get all the little birds coming after him for the food, yeah. you know, just pestering him. That's amazing. Little hawks trying to trying to eat on top of the pole. You ever see those freaking little birds go after the bigger birds? Yeah. They go near their nest and they like go spastic on. I mean, they're like they're like the little dogs that bark the crap out of you. Like, <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, we, uh, on the island, we have the piping plovers, of course. Oh, those are little ones that go. Yeah, I love those. And they things. mark off half the island for the nests. Like they oh, close yeah. off a lot of the yeah. whole beach for the nest. Yeah. When uh, my my beach access near the house, as I go there, there's a corner of one of the areas they've marked off. Oh, and if you, if you, well, it's got a corner, so it's just <laughs> yeah. marked off there. As you walk by, the piping plovers try to scare you off. Oh, do they? Yeah, they strafe you. They come around and they fly right at you, like oh, right in your really? face, and then they bark at you before they turn off. And, ah! <laughs> and, <just go> off. <laughs> and then another cool. one comes in. They get like six of them, and they start strafing you. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> trying to get oh, you away from yes. the nest. Yeah. I love watching them on the thing when they, their little feet go, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they're cool anyway. I, I understand, but they piss me off a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a lot of beach for, a, a, you know, from April to August. It's like, Jesus. Comes with the territory. <laughs> like the wildlife refuge down there, seven of the eight miles down there are blocked off. You can't use the beach. Really? Yeah. For the stupid birds? For the exactly, exactly <laughs> my point. And can't I'm, we can't we all coexist? What the hell? <laughs> and I know the piping plovers are critical to our uh, existence on this planet, but still. Evidently they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. First of all, uh, my heart go out to all those people that lost in that condominium. That was well, I lost. I mean, we, we don't know where they are. The problem is how many is still unknown? 150. 150. 150. Yeah. They found nine. Yeah. They dug nine out live or they found nine. They found nine. nine. Yeah. They, so uh, I think they had four originally. Got, so they must have had five. Oh, so there's nine confirmed dead now. There's nine confirmed four dead. Four last I checked. Yeah. Yeah. There's nine confirmed Can you dead. imagine? No. Yeah. There's a guy who got 16 text messages from his grandparents. Or calls. So I guess it was a calls or text message. Maybe a calls. guy they found? No. Oh. This, you know, all the families in down here, they take, they, they invite the families down. They keep them updated before anybody else so they don't have to hear it from the news and everything, which is, you know, pretty yeah. damn good. But uh, it's it's brutal down there. I mean, it, the heat. And then they had torrential rain and lightning. And yeah. they, where they've had to stop, they're digging in their own peril. And I, I don't know what they're it's just amazing but one of the the uh relatives of and all the relatives are given dna of course so just identify yeah but um one of the relatives received 16 phone calls from the grandparents no voice no nothing just noise on the end of it 
So the grandparents are unaccounted for? Oh, yeah. They're one of the 150. But they've called 16 times? 16 wow. times. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we say they, but we don't really know because yeah. there's no voice. It's just you hear noise and that's it. Yeah. A sad story. I wonder oh, what's yeah. going on there. It's sad. Really sad. Yeah, whatever. And, of course, uh, David Pasternak of the Bruins lost his newly born son. Oh, he was Six days it? old. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry, David. Yeah. That sucks too. Another sad story this morning. Yeah. Yep. All right. So Fourth of July is coming up, right? Yes. My favorite holiday. Yeah, and we love this country, you and I. Mm -hmm. Evidently, don't not everybody does. Non-gift holiday. I like non-gift holidays. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's not cheap. It's just there's so much pressure. Seriously. Yeah. You know, whatever. So we love this country. Not everybody does. That includes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Olympic hammer thrower. Oh, I think I've heard this story. Yeah. Yes, United States hammer thrower. Uh, she's a black woman, by the way, just to uh, make it clear. Because mm -hmm. uh, Gwynberry, thirty-one, uh, who had previously protested during the national anthem, said she felt that playing the national Star Spangled Banner during the medal ceremony was a setup. It was done on purpose because she reported, had been told uh, that it would play before they stood on the podium uh, when in the qualifying. So she's going for the Olympics under the American flag, yep. by the way. Yep. And so uh, she doesn't want to stand, you know, I mean, it's not like. You know, like they did there, put their fists up. You remember the Olympics? Uh, in, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that was black power. Yeah. Whatever. That was their, their thing. But that they, was my thing during the NFL yeah. situation. Yeah. It's like um, focusing on the anthem was the wrong thing. And listen, if you wanted to stand for the anthem and do the black power thing, I got no problem yeah. with that. Do what you want. Yeah. I mean, just to make people aware, you know wear a ribbon, whatever symbol you want to give mm -hmm. to, to for awareness, that's fine. But all you do with the, when we're protesting the national anthem is just dividing, you know, you're just peeling people away from you, you're just turning people off. Yeah, during the first, during the anthem, uh, first place finisher Deanna Price and second place finisher Brooke Anderson stood there with their hands over their heart, facing the flag. Barry, however, shifted to face the crowd, held her ceremonial flyers, flowers by his side, and eventually uh, held up and then covered her head with her T-shirt, which read, Josh Mandel calls for a November 3rd commission and stands by belief that Trump won 2020. That's what she's protesting. <laughs> what the hell's that got to do with our country? And all the guys that died for it Nothing. so that she could protest. Nothing, but all this talk about the election, the, the, the sanctity of the election. You know, I, I think it's funny how people are all worked up about this when they spent the four previous years questioning the election before that. Mm -hmm. Right. They spent four years doing it. They threw an impeachment hearing. They, you know, just it's it's crazy. All of a sudden you can't you can't. Uh, all of a sudden you can't question the election results. It's just nuts. It's crazy. I mean, you know, I don't care if it was the other way around, if it was a Trump Trumpite doing it either. It's just like, it's the freaking American flag. Did you hear this one? This one, I um, I thought this is where you were going. Uh, BMX freestyle rider Chelsea Wolf, who qualified oh. as an alternate to represent the U.S. at this year's Summer Olympics in Tokyo, Another woman. said last year that the goal was to win an Olympic medal so she can burn the U.S. flag on the podium. What a sweetheart. My goal is to win the Olympics so I can burn the U.S. flag on the podium. This is why they, uh, this is what they focus on during a pandemic, hurting trans children. Wolf wrote on Facebook what? on March 25th. I don't know what she's referring to. What? Uh, oh, al along with a link to the pink news story about the Trump administration's stance on transgender girls and female athletes. So she's upset. Hello. Wait a minute. Excuse me. I know. Trump is not our president anymore. You know what? Well, it's uh, Biden. So uh, but she said this. Last what's your year? problem? She said this last year, but you okay. know, there are people who have problems with transgender athletes yep. in female sports. They do. And because there are people who disagree. And we all have our opinions on it. Right. Right. And because people disagree with her, this person set their life goal to win a gold medal so they can burn the, burn the flag on the podium. Right. Because Great. some of us think that, 
you know, maybe competition should be gender fair. I, I agree. Yeah, not only gender fair, but uh, you know, the Blade Runner. I, I don't think he should have been able to compete in um, a regular, uh, in other words, Blade Runner. Yeah, the Blade Runner to get one to get arrested for killing his girlfriend. I mean, in jail for killing his girlfriend in South Africa. Oh, the W and the double amputee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Blade Runner. Yep. That was his name, mm -hmm. the Blade Runner. And you know, I I don't take anything away from him, but you know, it's it's not even field is the way I look at it. And the same with transgender thing. It's just yeah. not even field as far as certain sports. Okay. Are we talking about playing baseball? Hey, fine. I don't care. You know, whatever. It doesn't bother you. But if you're talking what a, a particular fee, uh, one where it does, for instance, a, a male transgender in a female sport on weightlifting or something, you know, you know or whatever, or, you know, so can we at least admit that it's, Worthy of a discussion. It's not something that no, should be can't. silenced, you silenced or shamed. You can't. Or, you can't discuss this anything. This is a legitimate either. discussion. You cannot discuss anything yeah. today. Whether you're protecting biological women yeah. from transgender athletes, I mean, yeah, everybody should have their own whatever. Yeah. It's to deny that it's worth a discussion at least is just uh, just astounding. Or we're going to burn the flag because of it. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right. So I don't want to get into politicals too much. So we we touched a little bit. We got. But it is July it's our, fourth week. So. It's our rant, you know. Yeah. We, we can have rants. After all, we're only men, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyway. We're mi we're middle aged white men too. So Mi there we go. We nobody are, can we listen, are the, nobody listens we, to we us. Are, we are the uh, We're the problem. We're the problem. Yeah. So anyways, um as I mentioned last week, we're gonna talk about cursed items, but uh I had one more thing I wanted to bring up. Oh yes. Next week is uh Fourth of July weekend. Mm -hmm. And Lou and I, okay. Lou and I have been, we want to do something a little different. And we, we've been bashing this idea around for a long while. <laughs> and it's called the Affection Connection. And we want to do a little show. Uh, we're going to give, uh, what kind of, what are we doing? Advice. 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 Life advice. Relationship advice. Relationship advice. That's yeah. a good word. Yeah. So uh, next next Monday show at... Uh, the same time on this slot here in Ghost on this Chronicles. slot in yeah. Ghost Chronicles, we're going to try it out, and we want your opinion whether you, you know, think we should go forth with it. Oh, and joining us, by the way, will be Saint Jan, from a woman's point of view, because <laughs> we don't want to be gender. Uh, oh yeah. You know, well, you need a woman's point of view. Need, oh God, do we figure out most of this? Crap. God, we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as much as men are men and women are women. They do need each other. <laughs> yeah, you need translators. Yeah, we do <laughs> for one thing. But but uh, sometimes they bring out the best in us, and of course, sometimes they bring out the worst in us, and, and vice versa. Uh, you know, it is. But anyways, so we're going to do this. Um, I, for you, example, yes, I did a I do a show with a sports psychologist. She's a woman, and psychology yes. show. And I just in the middle of one show, I blurted it out to her, "What is it with women?" She goes, "Oh, what now?" And it's like I sent out. In Newburyport, where I live, there was an old there's an old tradition of painting doors purple. Oh, okay, right, and uh, or now it's morphed into any color that's a little stands out from the house. It's not necessarily the house theme; it's a different color. It used to be purple. Yep. So I told my girlfriend and her daughter that I was going to paint the door purple. I said, "Why don't you go?" Because they were going up to Home Depot anyway. And get the color. Pick out some colors. Sure. That we can look over, right? Mm. And if I say that to uh -oh. you, if I say that to you, what are you thinking? How many colors do I, if you tell me, go pick out some colors we can choose from, how many colors do you think I'm coming back with? Uh, maybe a half dozen max. Yeah, five yeah. or six. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They came back, oh, and no. I'm not kidding. Uh -oh. I'm not kidding. <laughs> They came back with more than 40 of those swatch strips. Are you kidding which me? Which have like six, six colors, colors on each, each one. <laughs> right. They came back with those. That wasn't what they went through and looked at, because we might look at a lot of colors. Mm. They actually said, let's consider this, and came back with 40 of them. Yep. And, <laughs> and, and it's funny, that Dr. Kim Lennon was doing a show with because you've got to understand, women see colors differently than men. They have more cones and rods, so they see more tonal color. I guess. Yeah, that's fine, but we're not talking about the color. We're talking about the amount of choices you limited this to. Exactly. You could have looked at that and came back with five or six swatches, which would have been 30 colors. Just right? couldn't, they couldn't make up their mind. But it, it defeat, why did you even go? It defeats the whole purpose. 
they probably took well, every the, purple swatch that was in there. That's probably, probably your notes. Take this one. <laughs> <laughs> But, you but know, that's the kind of thing that you men said. And women them, are they different. said pick it up, so yeah. you, you they did that. They figured that they didn't want to waste any brain cells on it. So uh, <laughs> he'll just bring them home, give it to no, Lou, no. let him figure it no, out. No, <laughs> I think it's the exact opposite point. It's not that they didn't want to waste brain cells oh, on it. Did. It's just they paralyzed themselves with decisions, right? If you it's true. If you came back with forty swatch strips, you didn't make any decisions, and now you got to choose through those all over again. What I was thinking is bring me back. Three, four, five, yeah. you like. Yeah, whatever. I yeah. mean, maximus. <laughs> anyway. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's no. some of the differences between that's, men There and is women. different. Yeah, we, that's the way we are. You know, it's just, uh, and, and you and I always talk it again. If, if I ask Jen, like, you know, uh, did you go to the library? Uh, I hear a dissertation. Uh, you know, well, I went and got gas and then I uh, went to the grocery store and I picked these up at the grocery store and, uh, yep. and, 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 but eventually she gets to the point where she picked up books in the library. And, uh, so you went to the library. Oh yeah. I told you that. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. The 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or does your Jan do this one where you ask her a question about, for example, do you want to watch that movie? Oh God, no! Right? Yep. No. Do you? It, and it's like all you're looking for is yes, yes or, no. or no. That's all yes you're looking or for. No. Do you want to watch this movie or not? I don't size. need to know why. Exactly. Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You get the explanation yeah. why the decision's made. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm not judging your decision. I have no stake in this. It's like, do you want to watch it or not? Or, or whatever it is I'm asking. It's always the explanation of why. And I, I, I'm thinking that's a woman's thing too. Yeah. All right. So there's a little taste of what we can <laughs> think about. But uh, we'll give you yeah. advice, too. We're not just going to look. And we may not agree. We may give different advice. Oh, sure. uh, and, of course, we'll have Jen here to give us the woman's point of view to steer us on the straight and narrow, according to women. <laughs> because, God, we need it. We need it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's going to be next Monday. Uh, if you have questions ahead of time, if you have a, a relationship problem, a uh, question, not a problem even. If you do have a problem, we can handle that too. Yeah. Uh, let me reiterate, we are not medical doctors. <laughs> <laughs> no. And uh, so anyways, yeah, you can uh, email us here uh, at anyghostproject at comcast.net or do we even have, is there, a, or you can message us, right? Is that how they do it on Facebook? Message, yeah. Yeah, put a message on this show. Put a message on the show and we'll we'll answer yeah. it. And, and we'll take live, uh, we even take live calls. We can take live calls. That's just right. Again. If you want to call in and you've got you want to talk to us and and uh, you know yeah we'll we'll take that. Well you know we're pretty open. You can, we text us. Can they text us? They can. No. No, you can't text us. No. Well, you know what? But they can ask on that. You can show, you but... can text me. Out. No, no, never mind. I'm not giving out my freaking phone. Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's a it's a trash phone. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Yeah, so that's next Monday. Uh, Yep, the affection connection with uh, Lou and Ron and Jen and uh, yeah. So we'll see how in. this goes. We'll see how it goes. And if you <laughs> like it, and then we want feedback on it. If you like it or anything, then you know it's maybe a not in this particular time slot, but there may be a regular show on. So and uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. All right, so on to today's show, uh, which is somewhere in there. Um. What I came across, which which was did you say? I just got a text. Did you say watering pot plants? Yeah, or well, potted plants. Watering pot plants. <laughs> yeah. Watering pot plants. No, I don't do drugs. No. Or watering potted plants. Did you say that? Perhaps. Not that I know of. Okay. I didn't maybe know if there were Freudian is, slip there. Maybe somebody's in the potted plants before they. <laughs> they were. No, I. Uh, you know, no, I, I. I I don't do drugs and in, in uh, marijuana or even alcohol is is thing. I I'm one of those guys that like to be total control of myself all the time, and so yeah, I'm just like no, I don't care. Yeah, and I'm high on life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you and I were talking before the show about controlling thought, which is always a challenge. Oh yeah, well that's another story for another time. So we let our mind when when our, when our minds uh, storm the gate and get out of the gate. God yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Cursed items. So the first thing we have to do is set the parameter, mm -hmm. all right? Because a lot of, and you know, I looked, I got a couple of lists here for, of supposedly cursed items. Now, to me, they're not cursed items. They may have bad things associated with them, mm -hmm. but they're not cursed items. To you, what's the difference between a 
cause cursed item. Yeah, I want to hear your terms. In a um, possessed item. And I think that's oh, okay. the difference. Pretty much clear. All right. For instance, Annabelle the doll is a spirit attached to it. So, yeah, bad things can happen to it. But that's not a cursed item. No, is it, do you agree with me, right? A curse is someone issues a curse on There's the There's something item. associated with that particular item that brings bad luck to whoever does whatever they're not supposed to do. Does it have to be implemented by somebody? No, I don't think so. A curse item can just be naturally cursed. I, I have no idea how it gets cursed. And, yeah. and to me, it doesn't really, it isn't really important how it gets cursed. It only that it is cursed. Like the Yankees when I place bets on them. <laughs> they're cursed. Yeah. They always lose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, the $5 cash word scratch tickets. I have, I play cash word every morning. Every morning I get up. Oh, yeah. I play a $2 cash word every morning I get up. I buy 14 tickets at a time. Every morning I get up, I take one ticket, sit down with my coffee, do my scratch ticket, Yep. drink my coffee. Nice and relaxing thing. It's sure. kind of cool. It's fun. I enjoy it. Um, a little spark to start the day with. Yeah, I've yeah. done pretty good. Yeah. You know, I've, I've won, uh, you know, $100, I think about eight times. And, you know, I've won tons of other stuff too. Nice. So it, usually it pays for itself over the years for sure. But then I said, well, you know what? I'm going to try the $5 ones. Well, I tried that for quite a, not quite a while. I've tried it a decent amount of time. And I've never won on the freaking things. On the fives? On the fives. So they're cursed for me. So that's a curse. Thing. <laughs> There's only one lottery strategy that I ever bought into. And my mother gave it to me. And oh, it was probably go. the most brilliant thing she ever said in her life. What? Don't play? No, no. <laughs> she was working at a restaurant that sold tickets or something. Yeah. And her theory was that you buy the new games. That's true. Because they put the they load the winning odds at the beginning of the new games to get no, people to taste know, stuff. But just as they're all in there, and they haven't been won yet either. Yeah, which is the thing. Yeah, no, no, no good. That's but true. But she thought maybe you know, like they they say that the slot machine is loaded a little bit heavier near the door at a casino, something like that. Yeah, that makes sense to attract yeah. people yeah, in. Yeah. You would think with new games that up the odds just a little bit to get yeah. people in, and I don't know that it's true, but it was the only thing. It's one of the few things my mother ever said that made sense. Wow. God rest his soul. <laughs> yeah, God rest his soul. Wow. I can't believe you said that about your own mother. <laughs> you didn't never met my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, all mothers are alike. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so th that's so that's what we're going with, right? Yes. All right. So cursed is it has a, a Maluki attached to it. Uh, I'll, I'll Don't say attached. Attached reminds sounds sounds like possessed. Okay. Whoever has a curse to it. Whenever something yeah. bad happens, if you do whatever you do, for instance, okay. are you, for instance, even if you possess it, something bad happens. Okay. Yeah. So we'll give you, we'll start it off. Um, do you know what a uh, a moonstone is? Moonstone's a certain type of crystal, right? Yeah. 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 Anyways, there, there's different ones that you know that. Uh, so, you're here at Tiger's Eye? Tiger's Eye, sure. Yeah, Tiger's Eye. Mm -hmm. It's uh, no different. It's a beautiful gemstone, brown with uh, golden stripes resembling the eye of a tiger. Mm -hmm. Tiger's Eye is uh, known as for to promote stability, and it is believed to contain the energy of both Earth and the sun. The stone is stabilizing and grounding. It keeps your feet on the ground and allows you to see people in situations as they truly are who we need these <laughs> <laughs> the stone is known for it also is the stone of the mind helping to promote creative thinking and clarity god we must have this yeah way, huh? i need some tigers eye. <laughs> so that's where we miss roxy 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 would bring us some tigers eye. yeah I, I have probably have tigers eye. i have a bunch of stones mm -hmm. anyways uh you ever hear of rudolph Val valentino sure yeah you know, famous famous uh, actor. Yeah. Hot throb. Born in 1895. Mm -hmm. I remember that. He uh, immigrated to the United States in 1913, moved to Hollywood. He achieved stardom for his breakout role in Julio or Julio. Julio. <laughs> Julio and the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The night Apocalypse. 1921. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't even get me going on that. Ask me about Apollution now. Apocalypse now. 
I can't say that. <laughs> he was idolized as the Latin lover of the 1920s, and he starred in several romantic dramas, including The Sheik. All right. So that's when Rudolph saw a beautiful ring in the shop in San Francisco, he had to have it. Mm-hmm. The storekeeper warned him against it. No, 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 no. Telling him all the rings, telling him all the rings previous owners had met uh, with misfortune. Oh, the, this particular ring. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of a weird phrase. The storekeeper warned him, telling him all. The previous the ri- owners had met with all the rings previous, all the rings Possessing. previous yeah. owner. Okay, yeah. that makes sense now. Undeterred, he purchased it. All right. So he bought this beautiful cat's eye ring. Rudolph wore it, the ring through the filming of Young Raja and uh, the film flopped terribly. <laughs> Thinking the ring might have had something to do with it, he put the ring away for a time. While he fim- filled Son of Sheik. The movie opened in 1926, and Rudolph couldn't help himself. He pulled the ring out of the drawer and wore it to the premiere. Unfortunately, the ring was not done with him. <laughs> uh, and just a few weeks later, he collapsed outside of his New York apartment building and was rushed to the hospital. He suffered a ruptured ulcers and was rushed into surgery where he died of septa septus yeah that septa mia septa mia yeah whatever yeah uh that could be all bad luck or coincidence but what happened next makes coincidence hard to believe Uh here we go rudolph uh, valentino's funeral drew more than a hundred thousand mourners holy crap and caused several suicides among the grief. Oh, God. I'm sorry. You got a problem if you're killing inside because nah, whatever. Uh, when going, no, I'm not the other judge. <laughs> uh, we're going through, uh, while well, going through his will, the executioners of his state gave Rudolph lover Paula Negri her choice of belongings, and she chose his favorite ring, the cat's eye. Wow. So he never told her it was cursed. She was an actress, by the way. Yep. In Lover. Almost immediately. What was her name? Uh, pa- oh, God. I just was down. Paulo, Apollo, P O L A, which mm-hmm. is kind of a strange spelling of that. N E G R I, Negri. Paula Negri. Am I getting that right? Probably yeah. not. That's <laughs> right. I never get anybody's name right. Almost immediately, Paula, and it's not Paula, I guess it's Pola. I'll call her Paula for now, became gravely ill. As a precaution, she put the ring away and mysteriously got better. Hmm. The ring stayed out of sight for several years until she met a handsome young actor named Russ Colombo. Russ was said to be a near double for Rudolph, and Paula felt it fit him to give him the ring from uh, one Valentino to another. Hmm. A few short uh, days later, Russ got into a heated argument with a friend where he was shot and killed. All of Russ's possessions went to his cousin. Knowing how much the ring meant to Rush, uh, his cousin gifted the ring to his best friend, Joe Casino, who took the cursed ring and locked it in a glass case. It remained there for many years until... Uh, he finally decided that the curse was a fantasy or made up. He took the ring out and started wearing it. Weeks later, Casino got into an automobile accident in which the car was hit by a truck and he died on the scene. The ring was then passed on to Joe's brother, Dell, Good Lord. Who thought the curse was nothing more than a series of grim coincidences. He wore the ring for many years without incident and even loaned it to a Ral- Rudolph Valentino impersonator who also wore it without incident. At this point, Dell was certain the curse was absurd. That was until his home was robbed. The thief taken Valentino's ring. That's Paula Negri, by the way. It's up on the screen. Thank you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sight I'd like to see. I know. It's different back then. Huh? 
It was stolen by James Willis, who set off the alarm in the house. And when the police arrived on scene, they shot Willis and killed him. Holy cow. Inside his pocket was the ring, which was recovered and placed back in a safe place. This ring has a death count. <laughs> it does. It? Yeah. The thief, James Willis, took the, uh, the thief James. Uh, yeah, we already did that. Uh, all right. So we did that. Uh, this time, Dell took the ring and locked it away until uh, it was requested by his a 20-year-old figure skater, Jack Dunn, who was uh, being considered for the role of Rudolph Valentino in an upcoming bi oh biopic God. of the actor's life. Yep. Dell wow. graciously lent him the ring, as well as some of Valentino's clothes for the screen test. Jack Dunn died 10 days later of tubular tubulari media t u l a r e m i a i don't even know what that is a rare blood disorder oh there you there go, you go. <laughs> i should read on huh yep. <laughs> before i stumble over the stuff uh a rare dis uh yeah a rare oh this is lovely a rare blood disorder that had apparently contracted after handling a dead rabbit on a hunting trip Wow. Dell took the ring back again and kept it in a chest until he died of natural causes. The ring, ring uh, was returned once again to the vault, and uh, shortly after, uh, the bank suffered a cashier strike and then a fire. The ring's current location is unknown. Unknown. <laughs> wow. Pola Negris was born Apollonia Chalupek. It's a real name. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Polish, Polish uh, stage and film actress. She's one of your people. Wow. This is, I mean, so. That ring. Yeah, I'd stay away from that ring. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting, too. Uh, possession of, and locked them in the vault of a bank in Los Angeles. It was then discovered that the ring... Its curse was went beyond just people. The bank was robbed twice during its stay there. During one of the robberies, the ring was stolen, but it didn't go far. Several of the thieves were shot and killed by police during a chest. <laughs> After he was arrested, the leader of the gang of thieves said he had known the ring was in the vault. He would have considered another bank. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a cursed item, do you think? Sounds like it. <laughs> to me, it's a it lot is. of evidence. Yeah. Pola Negri died on August 1st, 1987 at 90 in the Northeast Baptist Hospital in San Antonio, Texas. Her death was caused by pneumonia, which had been rushed to the hospital for a week earlier. However, she was also suffering from a brain tumor mm. in there. Wow. Yeah, but that she got rid of the ring, remember? Yep. Yep, there she got. Yeah, so anyway. So that was uh, the curse of Valentino's ring, which I, I found extremely interesting. It was another one, because we talked about celebrities on the show you know we talked about john wayne capturing those spy uh those guys this hit squad from the crumb yes room. we talked about yeah. Luce, lucy uh lucy uh, ball yep the japanese spy japanese ring. spy ring so with their teeth yeah, with their teeth <laughs> signals in with their teeth yeah so i mean there's there's lots of lists on the on the internet by the way but uh so this is one, it has 21 cursed items. So I'm going to ask you about some of them, and you tell me if you think they're cursed okay. or they're, are they're something else. The Myrtle's Plantation, and I've written about this before. In fact, I think it's in my book. The Myrtle's Plantation in Louisiana is said to be one of the most haunted places in the world. However, excuse me. However, the spook, most spookiest item in the house is the mirror. Locals claim that the mirror is cursed. It had the spirits of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children who were poisoned by the slaves trapped inside. So that's possessed. Bingo. Yeah. So it shouldn't even be on its lips, correct? Well, yes, but we mean well, why are you qualifying that? Because you're applying a professional standard to someone just writing a list on a on an article. This is uh I don't know. I have to move it. Oh, this is a uh, scoop whoop. <laughs> exactly. What the hell do they know about the difference between cursed and possessed? <laughs> scoop whoop is a. Uh, <laughs> they pay people, unlike us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So that's not curse. I'm sorry. Uh, Baker's wedding dress. Inside the Baker Mansion in Altoona, USA. What the hell is Altoona? Pennsylvania. Oh, thank you. I believe. Uh, is the wedding dress of Anna Baker, who fell in love. This with is what happens when you like baseball and you're in the minor league baseball. You, you know man. where all these people, all these stupid little towns are. How come they don't have minor league football teams? I could never figure that out. That would be, I well, mean. they kind of do. It's called the NCAA. Yeah, but, you know, how many how many players? Because it's too cheap, I think. I think the NFL it would too cost cheap. money. The yes. owners would, but think about. I mean, some of the uh, the the foot the um, baseball affiliates they have a couple of teams that are on this. Uh, the same team is made up of prospects of right of right. So they could do that with the NFL. Think about it though. If you had, you know, an extended uh, roster, so where you also had minor league players. And then during the season, and God, you know, they get hurt. Look what happened last year. Look, right. You know, look what the Kansas City Chiefs front line happened yep. to. Uh, they could call up on these guys who have actually been playing and practicing. And, well, and they have practice squads. Yeah, I know, but there's only like 10, 11 guys. But, yeah. you know, I, to me, it just seems They that could way. expand that. That's yeah, true. I'm sorry. From that I'm, standpoint. Yeah, anyway. But the minor league, in the NFL, and it's, I think it's true in the NBA as well, in the NFL, you come out of... NBA is ridiculous. Don't even bring them you up. You come out of college <laughs> ready to play or you're not ready to play. In other words, yeah. there are very few players that you could say, if we put them in two or three years of development, they'll be ready for the NFL. No, you're ready for the NFL. You're not. Yeah. Once you get out of college. No, they, that's not true. Yeah. Because I, some people have to sit. You know that. Yeah. And they have to develop. And the Patriots are great for that. How many people like uh, Julian Ellerman... And Gunnar Olszewski, Olszewski, Wes Walker is the perfect. Wes Walker, another yeah. one. So you know, you know, they, they but they develop in the NFL. Yeah, but they they on practice squads and on uh, special teams. That's their their developmental. Yeah, because look what happened, Julian. Julian was a special player, a right. special team player for years. No, he was drafted as a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. he was a quarterback, and and yet they saw enough potential and know that he could be something else. So anyway, just look at Tim Tebow. <laughs> All right, <Yeah>. cursed items. <laughs> Speaking of cursed items, Tim Tebow. Uh, Lenders claim that Anna eloped from home to marry her lover, an iron worker, but her father forcibly brought her back and locked her in a bedroom. <laughs> oh, well, can't do that nowadays. <laughs> Sounds like Britney Spears' father. <laughs> oh my God, what I missed. Oh, I don't know. We're gonna go, we're gonna go off in another tantrum on that one. Uh, she then refused to marry anyone else and spent the rest of her life alone. After her death, members of the Baker family reported spotting Anna's wedding dress in different places around the house. Some of them saw the spirit of Anna Drake at, yeah, Drake at Baker uh, moving around the house dressed in the same wedding dress. So once again, not a cursed item. Right. First, there's no curse to it. Possessed. Possessed. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, there's not even a curse to it. No bad things have happened, right? Right. If you, you have any you want to mention, just let me know. I'm searching through some stuff. Yeah. Annabelle Adal. Discovery uh, doll goes back to 1907 when the mother brought it from an antique shop uh, as a birthday gift for her daughter. Soon the family noticed strange things inside the house related to the doll. The family called for help a renowned investigator, Ed and Merle Warren, who <laughs> found the doll was possessed by a seven-year-old girl, Anna Higgins, who was brutally murdered. The doll is now in the occult museum. But once again, yeah, there's your there's your answer right there. It's possessed. It's possessed. So, uh, do we have any cursed items? I don't know. I would think I'm still not sure about the naturally cursed. In other words, a curse has to. Although, oh, well, like someone, I, I would think right, someone take, would have take a to look actually, at the one the first note, the ring, right? Yeah. It's a cursed item. We don't know the reason why, but it's cursed. We yes. can ex accept that it's cursed. But I maybe mean, somebody didn't like one of the previous owners and put a curse on put them. Put a curse on them. Maybe someone was a bad person and that karma cursed them. Right? You we think don't, that's we, the way curses happen? Like I have no idea. Items. I'm not particularly big on curses myself. <laughs> yeah. I really am. But uh, I, you know me, I believe, we, the type I believe we make our own destiny. You know that. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, the type of curses I'm talking about where someone says, you know, the voodoo doll type yeah. of thing. Yeah, where they curse them. Well, no. Like I said, I'm Italian, so the Maluki. What is what is that? The, okay, the Maluki is, is something like that. What's it's that? the evil eye, you know. Evil eye. What's this thing? That's 
that's just a obscene gesture. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> but those, I think, are more of a psychological pheno phenomenon than a paranormal phenomenon. Because I think in the past, in a lot of cases, curses work. You put it, you put the power of suggestion in someone's mind. Power of suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. It's like but, oh, I'm cursed. But, but look at yeah. look at this thing though. Yeah. Okay, I understand that totally. But By the these way, rings, look at the Red Sox. <laughs> but look at this ring, right? Yeah. It's just like. You know, there, nobody put the curse in Ruben uh, Valentino know. mind, other than the guy saying that bad things had happened to people who had it. But well, I'm not eliminating an actual paranormal curse. I just think in a lot of cases, curses are designed to put the the threat, uh, the suggestion in people's minds. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's 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 a lot of them on here that are just like the most of them I look at. In fact, they're all. Uh, all right, the Screaming Skull, the Burton Agnes Hall in Burton Agnes, England, is home to a creepy paranormal object called yeah. the Screaming Skull. The skull is believed to be of Catherine Ann Griffith, who died in the same house after being attacked by bullies in 1620. Every night, a terrifying ghost is seen roaming around the skull, making tremendous noise and scaring out everyone who tried to remove the skull. That's possessed. Possessed again. Right. This is a cool one. A piece of... You, 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 rock. What? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> U L U R U. U L U R U. Uluru. Yeah. Uluru rock. That's that big red thing in Australia. You must have seen it. Oh, that big plateau? The yeah, the red, red rock. Yeah, yeah. red rock. Red, yeah. Much better than. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, the rock <laughs> yes. is a large sandstone formation in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia, also known as Ayers Rock, which I like much better. Yep. <laughs> I can I pronounce it. Nothing against. I'm sure that's an Aboriginal world and I have nothing yep. against it. I just can't pronounce it. Uh, this sacred place. This is a sacred place for the Aboriginal people of the area. This is the reason they requested or rather advised visitors not to take anything home from the site. However, many tourists have struggled home, smuggled home, uh, small chunks of the formation and experienced bad luck, serious illness, terrible breakups, and even death of loved ones. Why? Why would you bring home a piece of that? I would. You would? <laughs> well, again, you're a pro, so because it's cursed, right? Don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that and is that part of your personality, too. But. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, if and, and similar to, so that's a cursed item, right? Yep, agreed. Okay, uh, I have to tell you an own personal, personal, um, uh, w w a personal report of mine that on on this a similar type thing. Mm -hmm. You heard American Stonehenge, right? Sure, right here up and up in Salem. Yeah, yeah, up in Salem. Uh, we were uh, we oh god, this is probably twenty years ago. We we were the first paranormal group ever to stay. On the main site overnight and we did a show there and everything else and there's a sacrificial table there theoretically yeah. right yeah some idiots whatever <laughs> they screwed it up and everything yeah people are stupid people are stupid what it got vandalized or something? yeah i got vandalized yeah. people are assholes i'm yeah. sorry they really uh that's uh, true i don't know they do for no no reason at all uh but anyways the um i would enter uh i was interviewing don who worked there for years and years and years and years uh she was like a daughter to the owner of uh, stone uh which is funny he was named stone dennis his stone. name's stone yeah dennis stone who was the, his. so anyways uh she told me that there was uh there's two old ladies that uh went to the site and uh evidently they took home a piece of the uh, stone from the the uh their main site and then uh next day they came back and they put it back. I don't know if it was the next day, but a couple of days later, let's say, I forget the exact amount since 20 years ago. Uh, they came back with the stone and gave it back. Yeah, take this, take this. And she says, why? She says, we were here a couple of days ago yep. and uh, we, we took it home and uh, we put it in our living room. And then we woke up one morning and there was a nine foot Indian standing in our living room. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'd send that back. But that's a true story. A nine footer, huh? Nine footer. Uh, 
Do paranormal apparitions usually come outsides like that? You ever heard of that? Yeah, this, uh, yeah, once, once again, that's possessed, right? That would be possessed. Yes. Yeah, because it'd be, a, if it was actually a spirit that came up for it, you know, that or he's just coming yeah. to get it back. But when you see an apparition of a person, have you ever seen a nine footer? Mm -hmm. Do people talk about apparitions being bigger than life? I mean, no, there aren't any nine foot Indians. You ever heard of the Giants of America? Remember, it was a TV show, no, Search of the Giants. I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember the TV show. Yeah, that was a TV show. Two guys from around here, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they went out and searched because these supposedly these bones of giant people. Okay. Anyway. Another story for another time. Why wouldn't the, why wouldn't we have evolved towards the nine footers? You'd think they would be, in Darwin's sense, more superior. Uh, yeah, but maybe we couldn't. Probably have to eat a lot more. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> B bigger targets. Bigger targets. There you go. You know, if you're low profile, you're okay. Animals are going. Why go for the five footer? We'll go for the nine footer. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Or even enemies if they get in a war, right? Hey, is it the guy? Look at this guy. Yep. Mm, we got him. We're hiding behind a rock. He can't even find a rock small enough to hide behind. <laughs> or you see outsized people today, outsized humans generally have some health issues and things like that. And it's difficult for them to get around. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't mean to get in the giants, but okay. someday we will. We'll have to do a little thing on that. All right. How about a phone number? A cursed phone number. Cursed phone number. Oh, I like it. Yeah. The Bulgarian phone number. Is cursed. There is a Bulgarian phone number, and I will give it out. It is so if you want to call it, <laughs> be cursed. Yes. It's 359 888. That's three eights. Mm -hmm. Okay. 359 888 888 888. Really? Yep. So the Bulgarians eight is like our sixes. I guess which was used for 10 years, is now closed. Oh, it's closed. The reason being uh, behind the deactivation of the number lies in the number of deaths associated with it. All of the owners of this number died shortly after getting the number registered in their name. The first owner died of cancer, while the other two were shot without any solid motive. <laughs> okay. So there you go. <laughs> we're done with this number. So it's not a problem calling it. Except it's disconnected it. right now. Owning you it. have to own it. Yeah. Own it. I was gonna say we should give it a call. Wanna try it? <laughs> Pat cover the bill. <laughs> I don't know. It's plus, I guess, right? Plus three five. Oh, nine. what's the Bulgarian Area country code? code. Oh, I, have no <laughs> I don't know if we can do a country code here in the show anyway. I don't think so, anyways. Yeah. yeah. I could try it on this. Let's see if I get my funkin' waggles. I've got over a couple hundred dollars. You still need the thing. country code. Why am I getting text messages? See, that's why we don't do it. <laughs> you sure? Screw. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it was, do you have to put the plus in there? The Bulgarian country code is 359. See? So we're all set. Yep. So we go plus. Nope, that's a star. That's two stars. How do you make a thing? What's a plus? Do you do have to do a plus? Uh, apparently. Here we go. Making a live call to a cursed number. <laughs> there you go. It's ringing. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. Announcement for Twitch to. All right. So, oh, we said it was disconnected. Well, at least we tried, you yeah. know. No, nothing's, nothing's sacred on this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, would that, what, 13 would be in that category, wouldn't it? A lot of people think it's quote unquote cursed. Or it's bad luck. You know what? That's an interesting. Now that's that's intriguing, Lou, because thirteen uh, 
Yeah, a lot of people believe it's bad luck, yep. but a lot of people think it's good luck. All my hockey numbers are always 13. 13 so you wore 13. A lot of hockey players wear 13, but yeah. Yeah, and there there are a lot of people that uh, find 13 is a, a good number. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is. Funny that hockey players wear it because ho hockey players are famously superstitious. superstitious yeah. yeah. Yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. So, yeah. but I mean, you know, the, yeah, that's that's one you always. I mean, we we could we could do a whole show on thirteen. You know, we did it to the point where uh, a yeah. building it's skip a floor. Right? Yeah, triscophobia, right? Triscodecophobia. Oh, so close. Damn, yeah. that was pretty good for me though. <laughs> Triscodiscophobia. Yeah. Triscodis I'm gonna write a song. Triscodiscophobia. Right. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what happened? All right, yeah. So that's I don't know if that's cursed. It's that to me would be superstition. Yes. But it's superstition about a curse. Yeah, bad luck, I think. Yeah. Because Well, what's a curse? A curse is, brings you bad luck, doesn't it? Yeah, bad things happen to you from this, but it's it's a particular item versus a number which would be well no you had to no i don't know we'll have to think about that i really don't know i think it's i think bad luck and curse is not necessarily the same for okay. instance number 13 we'll, we'll go right back to that a lot of people think it's bad luck but like me i think it's good luck i wear it for my jersey so is it curse no not for me back to my premise that a lot of curses and i'm not Lumping them all in the same pile, but a lot of curses are just basically the power of suggestion. Or is it people having bad luck because they believe in the curse? Yeah. So if you believe, oh yeah, prophecy. if you believe in thirteen is is cursed or bad luck, then yeah, it might come to you. Where if I don't believe in it, then it might not. So right. But I think the something like Valentino's ring once again yeah. is is something that's just cursed. Yeah, because a lot of people didn't even know the story, so exactly. there would be no suggestion there. So I have another one, which is pretty good, and this this is really interesting. I I, I got to get a copy of one of these too. Uh, the crying boy painting. Oh yeah, you heard about it? Um, yeah, I'm looking at it on this. Oh no, I'm not looking at a different painting. Yeah, there's tons of them. Those are all just cursed. I have the hand resisting in painting. Yeah, that's I've had that one. Okay. Uh, anyways, painting of uh, crying boy was created by Giovanni Bragagolunian. <laughs> Very nice. Bragolin, Bragolin. Oh, there we do. I do Bra have it. Bragolin, Bragolin. And became quickly famous. It was then mass produced and found its way into many homes in Britain. However, soon many of these homes mysteriously caught fire. But most disturbing part of oh, the wow. entire incident. Oh, take that off the screen, right? <laughs> <laughs> you smell something? <laughs> you didn't tell me that. I, I should have waited. Most of the so the reproduction is is quote unquote cursed too. Yes. Oh wow. Most of the uh, disturbing part, or oh, the most disturbing part of the entire incident is, no matter how severe the fire was, the painting remained absolutely fine. Oh wow. Some regard uh, these fires as mere coincidences. But the un undamaged paintings uh, may have been uh, bagged by valid, may not have been bagged by a valid explanation to this date. Bagged? Bagged? Yeah. I didn't write that. British writing? Yeah. Yeah, could probably. But yeah, so, I mean, yeah. So, it, it, you know, if I was a firefighter, I'd have that screen printed under my shirts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Because the, the painting won't burn, right? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you protect protected. yourself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think all firemen's uniforms should be have the crying boy painting front and back. How many things can you think of that either have a superstition or an association with bad luck or a curse with the reproductive item? Yeah, In other words, not just the original painting, all the reproductions. Oh, Ouija board. Ouija board. Yeah. Exactly. But then, That's a good one. Yeah, but the, the Ouija board could be a cursed item. I mean, no, a possessed item, because you're supposed to use it, and then you get a spirit that joins it or whatever. Trust me, I get enough of these. A, per, a, a possessed item that you create the possession by calling on, on spirits. Calling the in, spirit yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. But yeah, that's a reproduced item. You're right on that. That's the end of the show, huh? That's the end of the show. Damn. Yeah. All right. So remember, next week, um, special Monday. It'll be the affection connection with uh, Ron, Lou, and Jen. 
and we will take your we will give you given um, uh, relationship advice. And uh, so we need your questions. We need your phone calls. Yep. Uh, yep you just join us and uh, we'll see how it goes. And if it's good, uh, not this particular, but at a different time and a different place, maybe we'll uh, have the show. Yep. So come have some go. fun with us next month. Yeah, come have some fun with us. You know, grab a beer or whatever. Bring your woman. Yeah. Bring your girls. Bring your guy. Sit down there and uh, go for the ride with us. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Hope Diamond, that's another cursed item. All right, so we got to go. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Good night, and God bless, everyone. From ghoulies to ghosties, long-leggedy beasties, and things that go bump in the night. Deliver us, good Lord.